Did that even jump off the page to you? Feels like that was a long time ago now. Um, one, it was great to be in the stadium and see kind of how people get bigger or smaller on that stage. Um, the guys you would expect to play well did, you know, and so that wasn't a surprise. You know, I think Julian Gray had a good day. Uh, just going back in my mind here on players that showed up. You know, defensively, uh, we definitely tackled well for our first day, bringing people to the ground. You know, I think that's always a concern is how that's going to be. Um, we stayed healthy, which is a huge part of the scrimmage, which may be the most important part <laughs> of a scrimmage. You know, we were able to do a bunch of good special teams work. So, you know, I feel good about just kind of the back and forth that's happening right now in camp, um, not just the scrimmage, but in practice. So, you know, and I'm getting to see guys that were out play again. So seeing Cyrus, uh, the two-minute drives, having Peyton, Drake, and Isaiah out there, you know, all those things are good. Are any of those guys, were they limited or they got full, full scrimmage? Yeah, I mean, we have a rep count. There's guys on our roster, as you know, that have 2,000 game reps, so they're not going to take every rep in practice, you know. So they're limited because we're doing that, yeah. not because of their health. And then there's other guys that are getting, you know, the bulk of the load because we want to get them better and, and develop them more. So it's kind of a delicate thing, you know. I mean, you want to get them enough to be ready to play ECU. Uh, at the same time, we don't need to get them too much because they've got a bulk of reps already banked. How have you seen Daryl Jones progress in this offense? And, uh, you know, what impact do you expect him to make? You know, he was out in the spring, as you all know. And so the, the best thing about Daryl right now has been consistent every day. He's been the same guy. He's a big, long guy. You know, he's got great dimensions to him. He's very consistent. He's mature. Um, he's got strong hands. He's really uh, helped us on special teams, too. So we're excited about his progression right now. He's a guy that's earned a lot of trust so far in camp. Isaiah says the dog days already. Go. How do you push these guys through the dog days? Uh, <laughs> you know, you give some speeches here and there, but you also <laughs> you lean on your leaders, you know. You lean on them. And they got to understand everyone else has got them too. Like there isn't a, oh, it's, you know, I'm sore. Like training camp is that, you know. It's going to be sore legs. Um, you're going to have some hot days, some days that aren't. You're going to build your chemistry, your team. You know, you're going to get to see kind of what the playmakers can do. That's what training camp is. So, you know, if you don't enjoy that, then it's really not the right sport. Isaiah singled out Davin Van as someone that stood out. What have you seen from him this fall? Yeah, he's probably been the most um, consistent playmaker in the front from a fall camp standpoint. He really worked hard this offseason. I think he went to work um, with Thunder and in the film room, too. You can see he's playing a lot faster, but he looks really good. He's in great shape. He's playing inside and outside, and for sure, one of the guys that we're excited about. How are Jordan and Cade progressing behind? Uh, we, we know what Betty could do because he played so much last year. Well, having Isaiah Drake and, and uh, Peyton back, how, yeah. how Jordan and Cade progression? Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, yeah. Yeah, Jordan Poole's doing really well. He, he's, him and Jalen Parker are probably two of the more improved guys in the linebacker core because they've gotten so many reps. Uh, Caden should be back out there. He's been limited, so he should be back out there with us moving forward. So I don't really have a report on him. But the other two are doing really good. Dave, years ago, it was graduate assistants who did a lot of supporting work in the staff. Now teams have analysts. You have three quality controls. You have rough. You know, how much value is that in yeah. terms of extra eyes on what you guys are doing as a program? You know, being able to delegate things and not get somebody where they have so many things, they don't do any of them well, I think is important. You know, so we can kind of, here's what you have to do as a graduate assistant. Here's what the analyst does. You know, uh, for Ruff, he and I are looking at practice like head coaches. So for me to be able to go in there and, hey, what'd you see today, man? Like, it's great to have that. You know, not just on the field, but things off the field. Like, hey, what do you think about the this idea? Or what do you think about this? Or, hey, we're traveling this week. Here's what I'm doing. Look at it. Let me know if you have any thoughts. So it just gives me somebody that's been in my seat that I trust that will tell me the truth. And, you know, having more people is good. You got to be careful how many. I think sometimes you can get too many people. Feel like some of the staffs out there are, you know, unlimited. It seems like, and I don't know how they have staff meetings. Like where they put all these guys, <laughs> but you know, we're in a good spot right now. And, and and to me, it's more about quality. You know, we've got some really good young coaches that I'm excited about.
I was going to say too. I mean, when you were starting out, obviously the staffs were <laughs> a little more, a little bit more contained. But were. is this just kind of? I mean, we see more of them in the ACC. You see them across college football. Is this just kind of the, the cost of how you have to operate a program now in college football? Is have more of these people working in your program and the infrastructure? Yeah, and I think recruiting is why that's that way. You know, there's so much more, as you guys know, different ways to communicate that in the past years back it was just you had to call people you know and, and now through all the different social media means that you can text dm so on or text people having more and then you know the graphics and the video and all the things that go on digital media wise that's where you see staffs almost turning into like nfl staffs where you have a bigger recruiting department how's the battle looking behind uh Devin Lear? you know i'm excited that jack and, and mj are progressing the way they are we're splitting reps with those guys with the twos, and, and uh, both of them are improving. Both of them are making mistakes, and they're both getting a lot of valuable reps against a really good defense right now. So I feel great about where we're at as far as who's behind them. I'm not ready to tell you who the two or three is yet. How neat is it to be sliding into game prep now? You're getting towards the back end. Almost. Almost. Not there yet, man. We still got this week. So we'll start that on Tuesday of next week.